So let's talk about your laboratory notebook. You need to be able to set it up so that it's ready to go. And you also need to know how to use it because our first lab is coming up fairly soon. To start with, you need to get a composition notebook, standard size. You've seen them. They've got a marbled cover, paper on the inside, tape binding. That's the one that you're looking for. It's kind of a standard size used for many different applications, but typically in the lab it makes for a handy tool. On the front cover, hopefully there is an area where you can write your name and the mod that you have my class. You want to do this in permanent marker so that it doesn't rub off or erase. That way, with a bunch of lab notebooks lying around, you'll always be able to tell which one is yours. If you want to get one of the fancy colored composition notebooks, that's fine too. It might help you easily find it in the stack. But make sure you put your name and mod on the front cover. On the inside of the front cover, I want you to write, please return to homeroom, and then put your homeroom number right in there. If for some reason you leave it behind in the commons or in the library, somebody who finds it will be able to get it to you probably in homeroom. When you're writing inside the lab notebook, you only write on the front side of the page. If you have the lab notebook open in front of you, that means just on the right hand side. The left hand side you can use for scratch work, but typically nothing goes on that side of the page that you want anyone to look at. You're going to need to number some pages. Remember, since we only write on the right-hand side pages, the front side of the page, you only number the front side of the page. Stop the video right now and number the first 10 pages of your lab notebook. Remember, only the front side or right-hand pages get numbers, but go ahead and do that. Finally, every time you do a new experiment, you want to make an entry in the front of the book in a table of contents. That way it's easy for somebody who's reading the lab book to find a particular experiment. That's also why you have page numbers. So what goes in the lab notebook? Well, pre-labs, data when you're doing an experiment, and some post-lab calculations will go in there as well. A pre-lab is something that you have to do before you do the experiment. That's what pre means, pre-lab, before the experiment, before the lab. So typically one to two class periods before we actually do a lab, you'll spend some time in class doing the pre-lab. The pre-lab has certain sections that have to be in there. The first thing you want is an experiment title. You want to put the title down of the experiment so that you know what it is you're looking at. You want to list out the materials and equipment that you're going to use in this experiment. You're going to list the steps that you're going to do in this lab. It's called a procedure. And then, because you haven't done the experiment yet, you don't have any data, but you want to set up a place for that data to live. So you're going to set up some data tables. And that usually means you need to use a ruler or straight edge to make some nice, straight, neat lines. Neat data tables are really useful in lab because they help to keep all of your data and observations organized. And an organized lab book is a really good lab book to have. Once you have your data table set up and you go to do the experiment, you can then fill in the data, numerical data, measurements, and observations as, you ha as they happen during the experiment. Make sure that if you are using numerical data that there you have the proper units so that you know what the context of that data is. If you're doing multiple trials, in other words you're doing the same experiment a couple of times through, make sure there's enough room in your table. When you read through lab handouts that explain the experiment, you should be able to get that information out of there. Finally, you've done the experiment, you've got your data, now you need to do some calculations. The calculations are going to go in your lab notebook as well. They're always going to be done by hand. It's really important that you get used to writing out solutions to problems. 
You always want to show your work. You show your thinking. An answer isn't really all that useful unless you know where it comes from. You got to make sure that the calculation is labeled. It has a little title so that whoever is reading your lab will know what is it that you're calculating. And finally, make sure that you have proper units or labels on those calculations. You always want to do this stuff in pencil because if you make a mistake, it's very easy to erase. You don't have to cross anything out or scribble it out. That's really all there is to it. Once you've got this stuff done for your first lab, you'll have a better sense as to how the lab notebook can be used. And you can then use some of that information to write your lab report. So go ahead and set up your lab notebook. Make sure that you do the first part of this, the setup. And when we do our first lab in a few classes, you'll be able to do your pre-lab, take some data, and do some post-lab work in there as well. Good luck.